This is the Boss Katana head, and I've finally got my hands on one, and today we're going to dial in some tones very quickly. I want to tip this amp forward and show you guys some of the features, and then we'll have a listen to it. And thanks to the magic of television, here we are. If you have a look at the front panel, starting from left to right, you've got your input, then you can select an amp type. This has clean, crunch, lead, brown, and acoustic. Then we've got gain, volume, bass, middle, and treble. We've got a booster and a modulation section, a delay and an effect section, and then a reverb section which can be turned on and off, which is pretty cool. Then a master section with a scalable power control on the far right, master in the middle, and a presence control there, as well as these tone settings, basically making it a switchable four-channel amp. And on the back, you've got an effects loop, you've got foot switchable control, you've got a direct out as well as a standard speaker out. So I'm actually running through the direct out using an impulse response and you know, with all YouTube videos, the way you capture the tone in the room is a big thing. So rather than mic up a cabinet and you know, have to go through all the different things with selecting speakers and selecting microphones and things like that, which all have a massive impact on the overall result of the tone. I'm just gonna use the direct signal. I'm using an impulse response I made of a four by 12 Marshall with vintage 30s using three mics, a Shure SM57, a Sennheiser 421, and a Royer 121. I think the impulse sounds really nice and balanced and I use it basically on all my stuff when I'm doing other videos. So we'll use it on this one and we'll have a listen to what the Katana can do. Finally, I'm gonna be playing an STR LJ1. This has some pickups by Martin A. Smith, who is a Western Australian pickup manufacturer you should all check out. That's one of his humbuckers in the bridge and one of his P90s in the neck. Let's get down with it. Okay, let's start with the clean channel. At the moment, I've got everything set to noon. On the bridge pickup of the guitar, it sounds like this. So what I would probably do with that is back off the mid-range in the bass a little bit and just boost a little bit of treble, which sounds like this. That is nice and snappy if I increase the gain a little bit. quite a good platform happening there. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of this boost just to see if we can sort of get into bluesy drive territory. That sounds really good. It's not too shrill or ice picky, which I like. I'll add a little bit of reverb to go with that now. And let's add a little bit of delay just cause. Maybe a bit more. That is tasty, I really like that. That is a pretty cool kind of fendery, I would say. It, it doesn't feel to me like a tube amp, it still feels like a solid state amp, but it is a really, really sweetly voiced solid state amp. And with a booster on there, it's, um, yeah, I imagine this would be a pretty good platform for pedals and things like that. Okay, I'll turn the effects off and we'll move on to the crunch channel. I'm gonna turn the gain down just a little bit and we'll set the EQ flat again. Let's just have a listen to that on the bridge pickup. Mm. Okay, instantly that's kind of instant ACDC. I might bump the gain a little bit. And 
And with a boost, I imagine that sounds pretty good. That sounds great at the stock settings. I might just back the treble off a little bit. And I mean, if we wanted to do more of a scoop thing, just simply pull the mids out and boost a bit of bass. This kind of has a bit of that 90s thing going on. which is pretty cool. And if we push the mids a little bit more and say back the bass off, turn the booster off, can it do the sort of plexi bark, I wonder. That gets pretty compressed sounding. I think that sounds really cool. I like that a lot. The only control I haven't played with is a presence with a presence off. I like that it's not too extreme there either. That's pretty cool. I think I just liked it at five. That works pretty well. So yeah, how much gain do we have though? That's pretty cool. Heaps again on the crunch channel. Let's go to the lead channel now. Same settings. Yeah, that's got plenty enough game for me. I could sit there and noodle around with that all day. The last channel is the brown channel. Let's hit it onto that. Imagine there's just like turbo version of what we just had. <laughs> Wow, the brown channel sounds 
a lot better than the crunch and the lead, I think. Not that those sounded bad, but that is way more the vibe I would be going for with something like this. I don't think I'd spend a lot of time off that. Um, the interesting thing to try will be how it cleans up. Yeah, that's really, really good. And then with a bit of a boost, let's hear that. Wicked, I like that a lot. We can add, obviously, let's just have a listen to how reverby the reverb gets. That's pretty cool. This is obviously on a spring type at the moment. It's kind of got a little bit of that drip happening. And then if you turn uh, either the booster mode, that goes into modulation, you can, using the tone editor, select different mod types. That sounds pretty good. There's a flanger on there at the moment and then you can have special effects instead of delay. Let's go to clean for this one. Yeah, there you go. So that's the Katana head. I think it sounds really, really good for some of those uh, brown tones as well as having a really nice clean sound, the crunch sound, and you can sort of get it into that Mesa territory. The person that I'm borrowing this off informs me that they have added an EQ in here with a very subtle kind of V-shaped, which probably explains why it sounds so chunky. I'm super into it. Um, plenty of low end with this, so I haven't played around with the tone editor at all. I'm just using their settings, but you can download the tone editor and get into that. But for me, I think that brown channel, probably the gain around halfway. I got the bass, middle, and treble. Bass is a little bit higher than middle and treble, but they're all around like one o'clock. Add a little bit of the booster, some delay. You can hear it's a little bit noisy, but man, this is a happening tone. <laughs> 